Hi folks and welcome back to Math with Captain Rod. The purpose of this video is to describe a couple quantities here. Uh, one that's called center of mass. So we're going to describe what it is and how it's calculated. And second we're going to talk about what's called center of area. What it is and how it's calculated. Alright, so center of mass. Imagine, I don't know, maybe some sort of mass here. And another one. And another one. And imagine in this example that they're connected by some sort of bar here. But imagine in this example, it's a very light bar. So as far as this thing is concerned, this example is concerned, all the mass is contained basically here, here, and here. So we've got, I'm going to call this like mass uh, 1 maybe, mass 2, mass 3. Now, depending on the relative weights of these, there's going to be a spot along here somewhere where you could get, for lack of a better way to put it, get this thing to balance. And the location is sometimes called a pivot point. Okay. And imagine that that point is right here. So imagine that, you know, in my example, mass one must be a lot more massive than two or three, and that's okay, that, that can happen, no problem at all. So imagine that I can put basically some sort of pin here and have this system be balanced. This pin is applying what we call in physics a force at the center of mass. Now this center of mass is a location. So that's, uh, uh, some sort of distance here. And I'm just going to call that distance, uh, let's say, D. And then the million dollar question is, how do we calculate it? Now, before we you know, take a look at this, or how would we calculate it, I want to talk a little bit about how grade points are calculated. So, you know, imagine maybe a uh, fall semester you take physics, and you take uh, another section of calculus and uh, English. And imagine that, you know, of course, I'm sure everybody gets hopefully four points in English, and we do pretty well in calculus, we get a 3.5, and we do well in physics, too, we get a 2.5. Now, when you calculate your average grade, you can't just add these numbers up and divide by 3. And that's because these courses have different weights to them, and typically the weight is measured by the number of credit hours. So physics is a five credit hour class. Calculus is sometimes, uh, or typically, right around four credit hours. English is usually three credit hours. So as you can see here, as it should be, physics is worth the most. So um, when we calculate our grade point average, what we have to do is we calculate what's called a weighted average. Instead of just adding these grades, 2.5 plus 3.5, plus 4, and dividing by 3, we have to assign weights to them. And the way we do that is we take our grade and we multiply by the number of credit hours. Then we take our grade in calculus here and then we multiply by the number of credit hours. Then we take our English grade and multiply by our number of credit hours. In the end, we divide out the total number of credit hours, which in this example would be 12. Now, an important thing to notice, we're still getting a grade point out of it. Grade times credit divided by credit is, is a grade. Same thing here, same thing here. And by multiplying by the grades, we're assigning a value, a weight to each of these. And again, that's called a weighted average. So getting back to our uh, discussion here of center of mass. Center of mass is calculated the same way. First, we would define a coordinate system. Now, where the coordinate system goes kind of depends on, uh, it basically can go wherever you want. I'm going to go ahead and put a coordinate system maybe right here. X, Y. Each of these masses right, has a certain value, and each one has a certain uh, coordinate with respect to that coordinate system. So mass 1 has a mass, I'm just going to call it M1, whatever that is and it's at an x-coordinate of 0. So I'm just going to make a little horizontal column here. So mass and x-coordinate. Mass 2 is at some other x-coordinate, which would be this distance in this picture. I'm going to call that, I'm just going to call that x2. Mass 3. All right, this has some sort of mass, and then its x-coordinate would be this distance. I'm going to go ahead and call that x3. Now, in this example, all of these x values are either 0 or positive. If we had something over here, the x value would be negative, which would be perfectly fine. 
the distance to our uh, center of mass here, and by the way, center masses are usually denoted with a bar over them. So x bar would represent kind of an average x coordinate. In this case, it's an x coordinate averaged by mass. And we would get it by averaging these and weighting them by these. So it's going to equal the first x coordinate is 0 times m1. Then we would take the second x coordinate, x2, multiply by uh, mass 2. Then we take the third x coordinate, x3, multiply by m3. In the end, we have to divide out what we weighted it by, which in this case is the mass. So we'd be dividing out m1 plus m2 plus m3. Provided that you know we had values here, we would get a value out for x bar, and that would tell us the distance from this first mass to the center of mass. Right? I'm going to take a moment here and talk about center of area. Uh, I think I'm going to pause this though while I change my picture. So stand by. All right, folks, thanks for being patient here. I guess for people watching the video, you didn't have to be that patient, but people in my class did. All right, so what we've got here is uh, imagine a pair of metal plates that are maybe welded together. And the first plate here is a big plate, two meter long, two meter high. And welded to the end here is another plate, one meter by one meter. And what we're going to do here is we're going to try to calculate the coordinates of the center of mass of this system. Now, we don't know in this example masses for these two plates, but what we do know are areas. This plate here has an area of four square meters, pretty obvious, pretty easy to show that. This plate has an area of one square meter, again, pretty easy to show that. An important thing to realize is as long as these plates um, have a uniform thickness, the center of mass and the center of area are going to be at the same location. So what we're going to do is we're going to calculate, we're going to use, we're going to calculate the center of area, which will tell us where the center of mass is. Now, each plate itself has a center of area, which is in its geometric center here. So I'm going to put a dot here to represent the center of uh, the first plate. Second plate has a center right about here. The center of area is some point, you know, uh, maybe right about here. It's definitely got to be to the right of this guy's center, and it's definitely got to be above it because we have area added up above. Now, before we calculate these, the first thing we need to do is define a coordinate system. Now, where we put a coordinate system is basically completely up to us. I'm going to go ahead and put my coordinate system in this lower left corner. So, x, y. Now, for plate 1, right, that's the larger of the two, plate 1 has an area of 4 square meters, and I'm getting that just from length times width. It has an x-coordinate of its um, centroid, which is going to be 1 meter. And I'm getting that just from geom uh, the symmetry of the problem. This thing's center of area and its center of mass are right in its geometric center. That'd be one meter over. It has a y coordinate to its center of mass, which is one meter up. Okay. Plate two. All right, that's this guy has an area of one square meter, and I'm getting that just by taking one times one, and again, I meant these to be squares. The x bar for plate one, uh, plate two is this distance, which is two meters plus another uh, half meter, so that's going to be 2.5 meters. The y bar for plate two is going to be 1 plus another 0 0.5, 1.5 meters. So this system has a center of area, which is somewhere maybe right about here. I'm going to say x bar, y bar. Now this is a two-dimensional problem, and you just basically treat it like a pair of one-dimensional problems. Take these one at a time, x bar. What we're going to do is we're going to take each plate 
and we are going to average the x coordinates of the center of area of each plate. So we're going to take the first x coordinate, which is 1 meter, and then we're going to multiply by the area of that plate, 4 square meters. Then we're going to add to that the x coordinate for the center of mass or center of area of the second plate. Those two things, by the way, center of mass and center of area would be at the same location in this example because of the uniform geometry. So that's going to be 2.5 meters multiplied by its area, 1 square meter. And then we're going to divide out the total area, which is 5 square meters. So I'm now going to take a moment here and ask my one of my helpers here to give me a value here. So we're going to have 4, 6.5 over 5. What does that come out to be? What's it come to? Thank you, 1.33. Okay, so that's about 1.33 uh, meters. I'll, I'll put approximately 1.3-ish meters. Ish is a technical term for two significant figures. All right, and you'll notice that is uh, just to the right of the center of mass of the first plate. All right now to get the y coordinate or y bar, I guess I'll write this up here. For the system, we're going to average these, this and this. And again, they need to be weighted by area. So we're going to have one meter times the area of that plate, four square meters, plus the next one, 1.5 meters times the area of that plate, one square meter. And then we're going to divide out the total area, which is five square meters. So that's going to be what, four, 5.5 over five? What does that come out to be? 1.1? So that's approximately 1.1 meters. So the center of area of this system is 1.3 meters to the right, 1.1 meters up from this coordinate system origin. The center of area and the center of mass would be at the same location in this example. If this was nice uniform thickness, and I'm talking about like this dimension, you know, back into the screen there. If it's nice uniform thickness, what that means is the center of area, center of mass would be in the same location. And that means that basically, if you hung this geometry by putting a screw through that and hanging it, screwing it to something, you could rotate it in any orientation and it's not going to have a tendency to want to rotate one way or the other. Now here we found the center of mass by using the center of area. We can do that if it's a uniform geometry. There's, had this been maybe made of lead and the one on the right aluminum, you couldn't do that. Or if the thickness over here were different than over here. You also couldn't do that. But again, in this example, we could. This is just a you know, nice easy one made up for demonstrating concepts here. So uh, hopefully that helps with a little bit about what center of mass is and what center of area is and how they're calculated. I think what I'll do is uh, make another video for uh, more complex examples. Have a great day.